Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina and I am so happy to be able to tell you I've been stitching. Um, got enough moving in done that I felt I could take a break. Uh, my husband is on a big hiking trip and so all of the next things that I need to do like putting up pictures or trimming some hedges or things like that I'm gonna need his help with. So I have permission from myself to take a break and do some stitching and just get the feel of my house and get settled in and get my son ready for surgery. So enough going on, but I did wanna let you know, I worked on dog lessons for people. I did almost an entire another line. There are a few more words on the end of that, but I was working on a prompt. I have missed a lot of those in the last two to three weeks. But this one um, was twofold. It was a prompt in my 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic, which is um, all the colors. <laughs> How do you like to stitch? Monochromatic or all the colors? And I chose all the colors. I do both, but I love color. And so I chose that acrostic. So mine, um, Dog Lessons for People, if you can hear Coco huffing at me, wanting my attention, uh, stands for the L for lessons for people. And I, I um, just wanted to get all the way up to that little dog bone if I could, and I did, so I was happy about that. And then the other prompt that I was working on was to stitch on a piece that either was, had an object in it that was hunted or could be hunted, or had something on it that would hunt. And in this piece, there is a puppy dog, and dogs do hunt. So I've used this for both of, of those um, prompts. One is a month-long prompt for this. So my plan is to take this with me on Saturday and work on it again at our stitching meetup here in Gainesville. And then I will be able to count both of my days in there. Probably won't work more than that on it because I just... I just want to touch everything. I want to get back in to all my pending projects and give them some love. So I have missed, I have missed them. Well, today is World Cross Stitch Day. Today is my son's birthday. Um, so we celebrated his birthday before he went on his totally liquid diet prep so that we could have fun and we let him pick whatever he wanted to do. And he chose to go eat at a new little restaurant, just a real small um, hamburger place, and then uh, go to Munchkies for an ice cream for dessert. And then we went to an artist colony in Buford, Georgia. It's an old, I think, stable or something, but it's a long building with different little tiny rooms in it. They're, um, they're a decent size, but they're small. Um, and each one houses an artist who rents that space out and that becomes their art studio. And on particular days, Saturday that we celebrated his birthday being one of them, you can go for free and you can walk up and down and watch them work, talk to them. Uh, and if you like something you see, you can purchase it directly from the artist. Our son was hoping that he would find something perfect for his uh, apartment that he's looking at designing um, for our basement space. But the one thing he liked, the artist wasn't there and her, um, it was a female's name, so I'm calling it her, but uh, she was not there and um, he took her card. There was a card outside that you could take to get her number. And I don't know whether he's gotten in touch with her yet or not. There was one of her pieces he was interested in. And uh, that was what I intended to give him for his birthday. So we'll see if he gets it, if he picks something out or not. Anyway, uh, I had chosen when I realized that today was going to be World Cross Stitch Day again. Last year, I started Cross Stitch Nation for this holiday. But this year, I am stitching on a uh, current project. And I chose Pandemic because Pandemic was worldwide. And I am cross stitching about it. So I felt like that that could uh, do well for the theme today. So the last time you saw this, I had a page finish. And that's where I am today. I am starting here. Now I've got to decide, am I going across or am I going down? And I think I'm gonna go all the way across. True to my nature, I'm gonna go left to right. So uh, that's my plan anyway. 
I'm about to put it in my stand and I want to share that with you. This is my Elon stand that uh, I learned about from Handwork Maniac, Brenda's channel. And um, I went and got the stand part and I started working on it until I decided I really, really liked it. And they have an attachment you can purchase and I purchased that attachment and that's what this is. Uh, it hooks on at the top of the stand. It's on an arm that pivots so you can kind of stretch it and move it to where you need it to be. But it has a portion here for your pattern to lean against. It has two nice size grooves in here. I've got my marking pencil, um, my Crayola pencil that I use to mark my patterns with in there. But you could actually put a book in here if you needed to. It's It's got enough space that you could put the binding of a book in there. And then you have um, a place to put your needles and pins. And there are even pegs here to hang your strands of floss on, especially if you have them on rings or you, you like to use floss in that manner. These smaller holes I'm putting in my scissors. And then um, there's also um, the bigger holes in the back. I decided to let one of them serve as my orc catcher for right now until I get everything set up and I have mine that's hanging off my desk. Um, and I have a tool here that I use on occasion when I'm splitting strands, when I'm separating thread. You put this little clip on the two strands that you need and you drop it. This, this is heavy, so it pulls down like this. And when you drop it and let it fall toward the ground, if you've got the ends of the rest of your strands, you just pull like this as it goes and it just goes right down and pulls them right out. Separates them beautifully and it lets you pull two at a time that way. Um, so I love it. I found it when I was moving. I had misplaced it and I was so happy to see it again. So I'm gonna stop talking now and I'm gonna work on Pandemic and I'll be working on this today, at least for a while today, to commemorate World Cross Stitch Day. And then when I finish working on the section, I will show you where I got to. And uh, I'll, I haven't forgotten, I owe you a picture of my a Little Sheep Virtues finish. And so I'll try to include that as well when I come back and show you where I got to today on uh, Pandemic. Talk to you in a little while, bye. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina, it is still August 13th and I am here to give you my update on my pandemic stitching for World Cross Stitch Day. I started this morning um, stitching on uh, pandemic for World Cross Stitch Day because pandemic were, was something that we experienced unfortunately worldwide. And um, I started at the end of a page break and I showed you uh, where that was a little bit earlier today. So now, I'll just show you where I got to. I was working on this for World Cross Stitch Day, but I could also meet a prompt with it. I needed 300 stitching, stitches to uh, on my largest whip, and this is by far my largest whip. So this is 304 stitches. It's a double border here and here, and then the rest of the piece drops down from that. You'll see my needle is still there. I have a little tiny end of a thread, probably 50 or so stitches left, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I put this away for the night. But I did want to go ahead and take my picture and post my prompt, you know, that I had met the prompt uh, with the 304 stitches, but I just wanted to show you. So this is how the uh, color of the piece went. I had the page break this left off at the very lightest part, but the very next section started on this darker blue. So this came all the way through all three um, lengths of thread. You know, as I've said before, I, I do one at a time. So that just shows you how variegated that one uh, thread is. It goes from that dark to that light and I'm trying to make sure I use it um, in that order so that my piece variegates uh, very nicely. And I'm very happy with how it's looking. So that's my pandemic. 
and I'm gonna put it away. It's still fairly early in the afternoon. My son is working late tonight, and so I'm waiting for it to cool down enough to take Coco for a walk. So I'll try to put the rest of these little stitches in here to finish off this thread. Call this one done for the day, and I may, depending on how playful Coco is, I may get to stitch a little more this evening and I'll move on to another whip. So I'll talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. Today was our stitching meetup here in Gainesville. It's Saturday and the date is August 14th. And I took something I felt like would be easy to work on there while I visited and talked. And so I took my dog lessons for people. Here it is. Again, I had worked on this for a prompt earlier this week. It was one of the first things I picked up because it was gonna be for a prompt and it was easy to get started back stitching on. And I did part of the first, second row. I had the first row done. So today I took it with me and I had gotten all the way up to Faithful before. And so I got to the end of the second row today. So that's two rows down and a whole bunch to go. <laughs> but I got that part done. I'm very, really happy that I got a, that accomplished today. But I wanna share something with you that I hadn't shown you already because I finished it sort of late last night, finished working on it. It's not a finish, don't get excited. Um, and I just thought I'd share it with you. This was also for a prompt in 24 Hours Across Stitch. It stood for the H in the word V for all the colors and H was for hollow, which is sleepy hollow. It was also for a prompt in cross stitch finish line for uh, an event that was running August 13th through the 15th called Scarecrow, and you were to stitch on something that had letters or numbers because the Scarecrow needed a brain, and you'd have to have a brain to do uh, lettering, reading, or math with numbers. And so the bottom of this uh, Sleepy Hollow has a whole written um, poem to it. So I use this one for that prompt. So it was a double whammy. I love it when I can do that. So I'll tell you what I got done. I pulled this out and I did the black bats on either side as I'm trying to extend that border down as I go. And then I came back up here and I started the black on the horse's rump <laughs> and went on out into his tail. And I did 314 stitches in black between those three things. So not a big uh, amount, but I'm trying to touch all of my whips as soon as possible. I'm trying to catch up on some prompts that I missed the first part of the month. And so, um, I'll be doing little bits and pieces probably on a lot of different things and that will help me get right back into a rotation, which is what I'm hoping to do. So, that's where we are. I did wanna tell you just briefly about our stitching meetup today. We had a wonderful group of 15 of us that got together at the Gainesville Library and we enjoyed each other's company and we stitched and I made an observation today I thought was kind of interesting. I told um, Stephanie, the lady that was sitting next to me, uh, I said, when we first started doing this years ago, there were a group of us, as many as 11 or 14 at a time, that would leave at lunch, walk up the street to the square, and go to lunch at one of the local restaurants there, and walk back to the library and stitch some more. I've noticed in the last two stitching meetups that we've had, we've only had two, July and August, but people are so excited to get back together and stitch, they don't wanna leave the room. And without anybody talking about it, everybody brought their own lunch or ordered something and had it delivered. Nobody left for lunch, nobody, on either day. <laughs> I think maybe the first time there were two people there who had never been there before and they didn't bring a lunch, they didn't know we were allowed to eat there, and they ran up to the square and got some pizza. Um, but that was just because they didn't know the facilities that we had and that we were allowed to eat in the room. 
But now that everybody knows that, today, nobody of the 15 people left. We all brought something that we could, you know, munch on or eat for lunch. And we stayed because nobody wants to leave. Everybody wants to stay together and talk and visit. And it was, it was fabulous. So, when we get together for these events, we have a freebie table. People bring any of their stash they are willing to part with and they all look and take what they want and it's just whatever you want on that table is free, free for all. Then we have a table we set up for our brag table and we put things on that. And today I did take uh, my Little Sheep Virtues and I took my Block Party Wolf because they were the two most recent things I had finished. Um, I did get a request today from a couple of people that before I hang all my pictures up in my house that I bring a few of the big ones for them to see that they've never seen in person. So I may be able to do that uh, next month if we haven't got all our pictures up. So today I wanted to share with you a couple of things. One, I got some things off the freebie table and um, I was real happy about that. And then two, I had one of the ladies who attended today so kindly brought to me uh, a bag full of patterns and things to go on the freebie table, but she asked me to look through it first and see if there were some things that I would like to have as giveaways on my channel or if I would like to stitch. She wanted me to have first dibs and that was the most thoughtful thing I was quite flattered and I very much appreciate it. So you know who you are. Thank you very much. That was so thoughtful. So here's the one thing I picked up off the freebie table that didn't come out of that wonderful bag. Uh, this came from one of our members who brought in a box of stuff. And later we found out why, because <laughs> she had ordered a bunch of patterns and things over a period of about three months and they all arrived today so she brought them to let us see them and she said she was making room for all of them so she brought a cardboard box full of patterns and fabric and finishing things and um, it, it was like a feeding frenzy <laughs> around the table it was great fun but I have several of these books different years, uh, a cross-stitch Christmas, and I absolutely adore them, and I did not have this one. So I grabbed this from, from uh, Stephanie, who brought that big box of wonderful things, and I won't do a full flip through for you, but I will tell you that there are several things in here I want to stitch, and then there are some things in here that are so beautiful I would love to stitch, but I don't even know if I will ever have the time but as a true stitcher does, <laughs> I kept the book just in case. Here's one. I think that's beautiful. I love the look of a wreath, even though I don't like stitching them. But that one is, is quite lovely and different. But this one rocked my world. You know I love Christmas anyway. Look at that Santa. Is that not gorgeous? It's amazing, and you can't tell from looking at it there, um, but the the ribbon, maybe you can, yeah, I think you can. The ribbon here is actually a ribbon that is tied to his hat. I think that's so cute, but I love it. And, you know, the cover picture's not too shabby either. Isn't that beautiful? Um, anyway, that picture alone and the wreath uh, made me grab this one. And then there are others that are just, the colors in here are just fabulous. Look at that. So pretty. Anyway, love this. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'll add that to my collection and my long list of growing Christmas things I want to stitch. The next thing I want to share with you, I got from the lady who asked me to look first, and um, so I'm going to treat it like haul, but it's really, it was a gift. So this is called Wish Upon a Star by Hands On Design. This is a Little House Needleworks pattern called Always and Forever. And there is a um, little receipt in the back from Dixie Darlin from Heather Cashel, um, 
that someone obviously stitched that on. Here's another Valentine's. You know, last year I tried to do some Valentine's because I didn't have very many, so I'm still kind of looking for those. And here's another one that says, Be Mine Always. And it was put out in 2021. And this is a scissor tails, scissor tail design. And I think I've only done one of a scissor tail design. This is a hands-on design, knee high. I know this is quite popular, it's lovely. And so I'm thinking this might be a good giveaway next summer. I love the look of this one. This is an Abbey Rose Designs. I don't, I've never stitched an Abbey Rose Designs before, but it's Believe in the Magic of Christmas. I think that's quite pretty. The colors are delightful. Let's see if you can see it a little better. Nice little small. This is a little Quaker, and it's a heartstring samplery. It's a little tiny Quaker. I thought that was precious. Even though it's a 2017, I really like it. It's not that far ago. Those are the ones that I gleaned out of that package for either myself to stitch or giveaways. And so, again, thank you so much for that. That was such a kindness uh, to me. I appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to get back to stitching. I would show you my sheet virtues, but it's now in the car where I took it to the stitching meetup. So I'll try to get that out uh, very soon and show it to you. I think I'm just teasing you, aren't I? <laughs> I did share it today and I, I took a poll because the framing wasn't what I expected. The frame is beautiful, but they didn't leave any space between the cross stitch and the frame. I was not expecting that. And I had a hard time with it. Didn't quite like it. But I did get some feedback today from folks who say they like to frame their cross stitch right up to the edge and it looked great and I didn't get any negatives. Um, so I think I may just leave it alone. I don't know what they would charge to redo it or I don't really want to invest any more money in it um, because it's not gonna be like an heirloom piece or anything. So I may just leave it as is and I'll bring it in and show it to you. So that's my stitching update today. I hope you've had a great Saturday. Uh, my son was kind enough to babysit Coco, and um, he sent me a little video uh, of, of the two of them today while I was stitching, and his little, um, his subject line said, it's, it's a normal day around here. And when I got the video, he's sitting on the couch and Coco is licking him. It, she loves to lick his hair. He doesn't even use hair products, but she loves to lick his hair. I don't know if she's grooming him or what, but she was licking right around the edge of his hair and then she kissed him on the cheek and it was so sweet. I loved it. Um, but anyway, I think they did well today. And I, um, I did leave a little bit early today because my husband wasn't here to help with Coco, like taking her out to exercise or walk or anything. My son took care of her here at the house um, but he, he wasn't going to take her out for a walk because it was too hot, you know, too, too, too hot during the day. But I felt like he needed a break. And so I came on home and we played with Coco together. And then I took him on some errands. He, he needed to go on some errands and he invited me to go with him. So we did that. And one of the things we did was buy Coco a new toy. So you may hear her in here. I don't know if you can hear her, but she's playing with her new toy. Um, she saw that bag as we walked in. We had several bags in our hands and one bag had her toys in it and she sniffed every bag real quick and then stuck her head right in the bag with all of her toys and picked the one she wanted. <laughs> it was cute, very cute. She's a character. All right, I'm gonna let you get back to your stitching and I will talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. I mentioned that I was gonna be doing quite a bit of catch-up stitching uh, for prompts and um, that I might be doing very small amounts of stitching uh, just so I could touch a lot of my whips. And fortunately, on one of the Facebook groups, the prompts that I'm stitching to only require a maximum of 200 points, a minimum of 100 points. And on the 24 hours of cross stitch, a cross stick, you can stitch whatever you want. You know, that's just whatever you want to do. So I've decided to let that total that I'm doing for one prompt be the amount that I have set for my goal for my 24 hours of cross stitch. So that way I get to 
things met at the same time. So one of the prompts I needed to work on was something that can lay eggs. And in my um, long may she wave, if you can see it clear enough, it's pro probably hard for you to see. There is an eagle at the top of the flag. And of course an eagle can lay eggs. So that is what I chose to use. There's also another eagle down here, right there as well. There's an eagle. So trust me, there's two on here. <laughs> so I decided to use it for that prompt of something that can lay eggs. And if you'll recall, this is my um, banding that I'm stitching on that I got from 123Stitch. And it is a um, stitch band. It's a 24 count, or in my case, I think it, I think it was 24 count, um, buzz from Zweigart, and I got it, as I mentioned, at 123 Stitch. And it is in a raw linen color, or just, it's, it's just an off-white. So, anyway, it fits. <laughs> it works. Okay, it's my first banding I've ever stitched on, and I am enjoying it a great deal. I had to roll it up. I had stitched to, I had this branch, and I had done this branch and the star, but the bell was not there. So I stitched the bell today, and then I came on down and extended this when I rolled it up. I extended the tree trunk. I put in this branch and heart, and I put in this branch. So my total stitches, um, resulted in 220 and so that was enough to make my prompt of 200 in my Facebook group and so that also um, covered my L in my 24 hours of cross stitch because my acrostic is all the colors so I had the L in the word colors was long may she wave so I've got a little bit more done on long may she wave um, I got two motifs in and two more branches, so a little bit, but it just goes to show that I have put some work into this one right now, so that's important. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you my framed Little Sheep Virtues. Got it from the framers uh, last week and had it downstairs every time I was up here and then had it in the car, so I apologize for the delay, but here it is. It's a beautiful wood tone frame. Brings out the colors in the lettering uh, for the um, stitching. Sorry for that glare. Um, it does have glass on it because our last home being so close to the highway was very dusty and I put glass on everything even something that had all these buttons on here but I was disappointed when I first saw this I really was I'm gonna be very transparent here I didn't like the framing going right up to the stitching I felt like it needed space but when I took it today I asked and everybody really liked it that talked to me about it and so I think I'm growing to like it um, it look it looks like a perfect fit in there so I'm just gonna leave it that way I wanted the frame to be rustic and, and hearty I wanted it to look like something you might have made from the farm you know because this looks like a sheep farm and uh, I really like it I think it's gonna be really really pretty in there this, as I mentioned, I stitched for, to go with the um, afghan that has the 12 virtues in it. And um, so, um, I think they're gonna look great together. But now, because of us not having a finished apartment uh, yet in this house, our son, who rents from us, is actually living in our guest room and guest using our guest bath and, and another room in the house for his living room. Um, and so I can't put this in my guest room yet. Colors don't go. So I will probably put this up in here and bring my afghan up here for the winter and lay it across my bench. I have a little bench over at a round table over there for when I have 
guest at my home stitching. And so this may actually get to hang um, somewhere in that area. We, we will see. It's small enough that I might could find a space for it on the wall up here. But I just wanted to show it to you. So I hope you like it. And uh, I'll go put it away and I'll get back to stitching. It's still early uh, in the evening. It's, it's only 9.30. And um, I probably couldn't go back to, I couldn't go to sleep quite this early. So I will um, probably continue to stitch just a little bit more. Um, got Coco a new toy today. Usually when she's missing her daddy really badly, I try to give her a new toy while he's gone just to entertain her. And her new toy is the cutest little raccoon. Look at that tail. Isn't this precious? She has been playing with it all afternoon. Um, so, I would say that was a big success. I'll try to get some footage of her playing with it in the next day or two if I can so I can put it in here for you. But if you don't see it, that means she tore it up before I could. <laughs> She's really rough on toys. Um, so we'll see how that goes. I'm excited to get to say it again because I haven't been saying it for so long. Happy stitching, everybody. Hello again, everybody. This is Dina, and this will be my final um, little video of the night. I'm just now taking my roller frame off my stand. It's about 11.30 at night, so it's time to turn in. But I just wanted to share with you, I completed one more prompt today, so I feel like I've made great progress. And I worked on my Strawberry Fields Forever the prompt that I was meeting, there were actually two of them. One is to work on a project that has plants or trees in it. And not only does this have strawberries in the border, but it has a big plant right here in this um, planter. And so um, I think it meets the criteria just fine. And I worked on it. I've been, I did the border before and then I came over and did um, started on this motif at the top but tonight when I got started I was actually um, on a phone call with a friend who was very excited because uh, they had been looking for a car for about a month or so um, and she found it today and they had to drive all the way to Tennessee to get it um, and so she texted me just saying I'm in my new car so I had to call her and congratulate her so while we were chatting, I thought it would be easier to come over here and just stitch the outline of these bricks. So I pulled that color to do that. And then I realized that I would have to scroll this all the way up to get to the bottom. And then I would have to scroll it back to work on it. So instead, I could actually reach this bird without scrolling. So I did this bird and then I came over and I did uh, the grass and one row of this pot until I got the number of stitches I needed. I needed 200 stitches for my prompt and I just went ahead and finished out a thread so I got 229. So I'll show you what that looks like on my Strawberry Fields Forever. So there's the little bird with his little plant stem in his mouth. I haven't put the flower in yet but his uh, chest color is the same as this first uh, row in the planter and so I went ahead and, and did him and then came over and did that row of the planter and then started the greenery underneath the bird and the planter and worked my way across until I got enough stitches so basically now I've been working at the top and the bottom I think I'm gonna next time probably finish this motif and then I'll work from the bottom up so that I can make sure I get the central house and everything in there um, and make sure it all fits. So that's what I did on my Strawberry Fields Forever. Uh, hope you can see it, there you go. Um, I think it's coming along well. It stitches quickly and 
but I really am enjoying it. So I look forward to pulling it back out again soon. Well, today I have stitched roughly 1,000 or 1,200 stitches, somewhere in there, I haven't added it up. Uh, so it's been a very good stitching day. And um, I stopped for a little while and played with Coco and I got a tiny bit of footage of her with her new toy. So I will be able to put that at the end. I hope you enjoy it. I'm gonna call it a night, go take my puppy to bed and I'll see you later. Hopefully tomorrow. I hope I get to stitch again tomorrow. In the meantime, happy stitching everybody. Throw it in at me. You want me to throw it? I'm gonna get it. <laughs> oh, that means she wants me to try to get it from her. <laughs> See you guys later. Hello everyone, welcome back, this is Dina. Today is Sunday, it is the 15th of August, and I have a very brief update to share with you this evening. Today I decided to work on one of my whips that I could use for two different um, prompts. The first one was in the 24 hours of cross stitch, cross stick, all the colors. And so for one of the O's in color, I decided to use one motif, which is in my winter Quaker piece, and this is what it looks like. And then I also had a prompt to stitch on um, something that was part of a series, I had to stop and think, um, of at least three or more. And as you may be aware, the seasonal Quakers, there are four of them. There's the winter, spring, summer, and fall. So um, this is the first of the ones that I have started on. I don't know that I'll do all, uh, any other than that one. This was the one I like the most. So I am just taking it off my stand at the moment to show you the one motif that I did. It was only 173 stitches, uh, but that was my goal to get one motif and I did this one right here in the far left hand side working my way across here again and so I got that done so a little bit of love on that not a lot but it met two prompts today and got an opportunity for me to stitch on it which is great I will let you get back to stitching and I hope to have a lot more stitching for you in the coming week happy stitching everybody Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Dina. Today is Tuesday. It is August the 17th and I'm here to give you a little bit of a stitching update. Um, I have been working uh, feverishly on some prompts and I've been uh, fortunate that the last group of prompts I was working on, I only needed a maximum of 200 stitches to get my credit. So today I finished the last prompt in that series and it was to stitch on something that was either a solo dye fabric or was an out of print pattern. And at that moment when I read the prompt, I wasn't sure I had an out of print pattern in progress, but as it turned out, just recently in the last week, I think, this Gathering Eggs by Mirabilia went out of print. So I have been working on it if you've seen previous videos and I decided that I would use this for that prompt. I also used it for a 24 hours of cross stitch uh, prompt as well for E in the last letter in the word the for all the colors and um, I used that E for eggs 
and gathering eggs. So again, a double whammy. <laughs> so let me show you what I got done. I only did 217 stitches. I needed 200 and so that helped. I just stitched till I finished off that color. So here's where I'm at. I think she's adorable. She's quite pretty. So what I stitched included this bright yellow on this side of the flowers. And then there were a couple of bright yellow stitches over here in these pink flowers that I came over and did. And when I did that, I realized that these pink flowers had some confetti in them that I hadn't done yet, and they needed to be brought down even, so I'm working my way across so I can roll, you know, my I can move my uh, Q-snap down pretty well together. So I went back over here to the pink side, and I did three different colors of pink in there, and I brought this from about up here to all the way down here. So I did quite a bit of pink. Most of those 217 stitches were in the pink section. She has the sweetest face. I'm just loving working on her. It is a um, very confetti heavy piece. Uh, when I got started on it this time, I wasn't quite in the mood for confetti. But after I stitched one of the colors and I moved to the next color and I was gonna, you know, just color complete down to about right here, it was wonderful. It was so good to get back into this piece. I've enjoyed it quite a bit. So that finishes up that round of prompts and now I'm gonna be working uh, to finish up my two acrostics that I'm working on. One is the 24 hours cross stitch, which I mentioned to you before. And I have completed oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. Uh, and there are 13 of them. And then I, on um, for the uh, mag monthly, the magazine monthly challenge acrostic, which is sunflowers. I've only done five so far. So I've got to get busy. Um, I got to get busy on that one. So. I got those going on. And then there's another um, group of prompts that is in a Facebook group based on the Olympics. And I've, I've done one of those prompts. I don't know that I'm gonna do any more. I've got to look and see if I've got something I want to pull out and work on. Because to meet some of those prompts, you can't do alternate stitches. You can't do something and just do extra stitches because your uh, piece didn't fit and um, looking at what I would have to use to stitch them all, I have already touched those whips and I want to keep going and touch more. So it may not work for me to do that one. I may just uh, have to skip over it and do the next things that are coming up and that's okay. So it's been a good two days. I've got a little bit of stitching in in both days. I'm happy about that. And I'm looking forward to uh, maybe getting a little travel stitching done tomorrow um, when I drop my son off for his uh, appointments with his physician and then at the hospital, I'll have a little time to stitch in the car. So wish me well there. I'm going to let you go and get back to what you were doing. And um, I got a little more work done today in my craft room. Uh, Decided not to wait any longer to swap out the drawer, the stacker drawers that are to hold all of my sewing supplies. So they're full now. Uh, if I get a new one to replace that one, I'll just swap out all the stuff. So that's okay. But it helped me clear out an entire um, three-tiered cart to, to go into that. So now I have some space I can work with to try to get some other things uh, put away. So that was good. That was a good uh, progress for the day. So I'll keep you posted as I go. Um, talked to my hubby today. That was great. It's the first time he's had a signal since he started hiking. And I'm happy to hear that. Uh, they went through a long stretch of about 16 miles um, in the last two days where there was nowhere to stop for water. So they had to carry a lot of water with them in the last two days. So I know he's glad to be through with that part of the hike. Coco's here with me. I don't know if she'll let me bring her up to, for you to see her. She doesn't like you to pick her up, 
but uh, she had a little haircut today, so she looks beautiful. If I can capture a picture of her, I'll snap one for you and uh, I'll insert it. So happy stitching everybody and I'll talk to you soon. Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tina. It is Wednesday. It's the 18th of August and I'm here to give you a bit of an update. In addition to going with my son today for his uh, pre-op visit for his surgery coming up on Tuesday, I um, finished some stitching this morning before we left. I had a new prompt to work on and it was to stitch on something that would illustrate a harvest season and I was to do either 200 or 300 stitches and I chose to do 200. I've mentioned in a segment prior that I am working through prompts on the lower number right now just so I can touch a lot of my whips and get back into the swing of the rotation. So I pulled out my Field Mouse Hollow and I did all of this greenery across here and up here. This one little flower here was already there because I did that before I filled in the shoe in the past. But I started over here and did the greenery all the way across and all the way up and got that strand done um, for 210 stitches. So I got my prompt met. I'm very happy about that. So now I want to give you a really quick update uh, regarding my son's visit with his surgeon today. Uh, if you've been following my channel, you know that I shared with everyone that his surgery was canceled at the last minute um, while he was at the hospital before because of a miscommunication regarding a medication that he was not supposed to take and we were told that he should. During that whole episode, I think I may have shared with you that the surgeon was very upset and made the comment to us that that could not have happened, that his staff uh, knew exactly what to do and no one would have told us to take that medication. So apparently, he went back to his office and he asked the question and he discovered that we were telling the absolute truth and the people that I spoke with on the phone admitted talking to me and shared with the physician what they told me. And as it turned out today, when my son showed up for his pre-op visit, the first thing his surgeon did was apologize. He apologized for having to cancel the surgery. He apologized for his staff making a mistake. It was a junior nurse, not one of his senior nurses that, that should have been answering the questions. It was a junior nurse who should not have been answering the questions. She was too new there to know exactly what to tell us. We did not know that, of course. We didn't uh, have any control over who uh, they asked the question of when I called into the office. So it was totally his office's fault and he uh, stated that and told my son how very sorry he was that it had happened and that it had caused him a delay. And um, my son was gracious enough not to say it cost him $500 because he had to pay for that room that he had been in before surgery and he had to pay for the IV and he had to pay for the pain meds that they had already put on board. He had to pay for all that and got nothing for it. And there was not even a mention of reimbursing him for that or anything and he didn't ask. He's not gonna. But I was impressed and I just wanted to share that with you that this surgeon actually respected my son enough that when he told the surgeon, no, you know, this is what happened, he went back and checked. And I also wanna give real kudos to the staff, whom I'm sure were a little nervous to admit what they had done, knowing how angry he got. Um, anyway, the good news is he assured my son that proper training had been given, proper information has now been shared with this employee and they now know what to do and that won't happen to another patient, which is great. Uh, so that is the silver lining, I think, really. Um, so when my son told me that today, uh, after his meeting with the physician, 
I will tell you, it warmed my heart because my son picked him because he has the best surgical skills in that area. But I like the fact that he also has character. So it made me feel really good about it. So looking forward to a very good outcome uh, for his surgery on Tuesday. So I wanted to share that with you because it was pretty important to me today. It really made my day and I, I thought you might appreciate that as well. Um, I, it, I don't hear of too many surgeons who apologize uh, or admit they were wrong. Um, it's a hard, hard field and they have to be very confident and they have to be, in many cases, uh, quite strong characters and um, this one uh, impressed me. So, just wanted to share that with you. I got my hair cut today. I went back to the asymmetrical cut for the summer just to have something different. And um, I had lots of compliments on this sort of cut before. My hairdresser, um, I showed her a picture of how she had cut it in the past. And she cut it a little differently today. She left it much fuller on this side than she had before. Um, I think it was a, a little bit um, less full and she likes it better this way. Um, I will figure out whether I do or not as I'm having to style it, but I, I do think it's cute and uh, I like it. It's different. Um, and so that'll be uh, my summer cut anyway. Coco got her summer cut yesterday, so I had to get mine today. So now here's what I'm planning on doing. I have a new start that I have to work on for my Whipco board. One of the numbers that was called this month was Stitching Bird, and I have to make a new start. So I took it with me today um, to try to get started on it while my son was in his appointments, and I did get a few stitches in, but not a lot. Um, I spent most of my time really driving around from place to place, uh, doing a couple of errands, and um, and then when I parked to wait on him, I only got a little stitching done before he was finished, so that worked out okay. But this is what I'm gonna be working on. This is my new start per my Whipgo board, and I'm gonna get started on it tonight. I think my goal on my Whipgo board is that I have to finish the whole thing by the end of the year. That shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, so I will be working on that. I hope you're having a great time stitching, and uh, I hope to see you very soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. This is Dina, and today is Saturday. It's August the 21st, so we have experienced three birthdays in this month. My son's birthday, which we celebrated uh, right before, my husband went for his hike so he could be part of the celebration. And then yesterday was Coco and my husband's birthday. They, have, they share a birthday. And uh, we spoke to my husband. He actually came off the trail, finished his hike yesterday, and um, his hiking buddies sang happy birthday to him, which was quite nice. Um, so he'll be flying home. And when he gets here sometime in the next week, we'll celebrate his birthday with Coco. So that's been a fun time. I'm glad he's safe and sound and uh, hope he has a safe flight home. In the meantime, I have been stitching. So I looked at my Whipgo board and um, decided to go ahead and pick up the uh, called for project on number eight, which for me was Stitching Bird by Heart in Hand. And my goal on my Whipgo board was to stitch it all the way to a finish because it is a small and so I I did just that and I'd like to share with you my finish because it looks a little different I substituted some colors that I didn't have and I chose a different fabric so here's my finish of stitching bird this is on a 32 count Lugana it is by it's a fabric that's been hand dyed by Stephanie and it's called seaside so I'll open it out. It only took half of the piece. So I can um, 
use the other half for something else. But I picked it, quite frankly, because of the color palette in the pattern. There is a beautiful bluish green uh, thread here. And the name of that is Tartan Plaid. It's kind of a blue green, it's beautiful. I looked it up online because I didn't have it. But the closest thing that I had to Tartan Plaid was a silk, a water lilies silk. And that silk is named South Pacific. So there's that pretty blue green. And that's what I did my border in. So there were a couple of other little reds I didn't have or a pink I didn't have, or this green was one number off. I had to do a one color lighter than was called for because I had been kitting up projects for Whipgo and I had kitted up some projects thinking I might do Stitch Mania and I wound up doing a March Madness kind of thing. But anyway, I had kitted up so much last year that I was running low on some things. And so I've used a a different hand dyed pink and a different um, you know colors I actually I think it was three that I substituted but I think it's pretty I'm very happy with the finish there is one thing missing from here though there's a little button here of a spool of thread that's supposed to go on this piece and I didn't have the button I don't know whether I didn't know to order it when I got the pattern or if I got this off a freebie table or someone gifted it to me, but the button didn't come with it. So I will be ordering the button and then once I put that on there, I'll fully finish it. But what that means is with this finish, that completes my whip go spot. So our printer isn't working yet since we moved. We've got the computer up and running um, on a hotspot from our telephone but the printer doesn't seem to be working well like that. So I couldn't redo my Whipgo board and print it new for you. So I just colored the spot blue. Bear with me on that. Um, so this one's been called for, it's my Hade, and I have a page finish yet to do on that, and I'm working slowly on that. But all these yellow ones, you know, are ones I've already done, but they haven't been called. And the three that I have left to work on are, have not been called and I haven't done anything on them are these three and I'll, I'll share those with you. The first one is 10 hours to work on Crystal Christmas and if you have watched my videos for very long you know that recently I decided I wasn't going to work on Crystal Christmas unless it was called until I finished Giggles in the Snow because I already have that big winter mirabilia going with Giggles in the Snow and Crystal Christmas is another huge big winter piece from mirabilia. And I just thought, I'll just wait, try to have one at a time, unless it gets called, and then I'll put 10 hours in it. The second one that is not been called, and I, I don't have it marked out because I haven't finished the, the goal on it, is my mermaid. I'm supposed to do half of that border. I don't know that I'll get half of that border done this year. It is a lot more intricate than I ever imagined that it would be, and so that may be the one goal I don't hit. I don't know. But that's okay if I only miss one. That's all right. The third one that I haven't done anything on is number 23 for, on my board, and that is Hello Winter. It is here for five hours. So that is a new start, and I can do that when it's called and just put five hours in it and, and have it completed pretty quickly. So what that means is, um, with the exception of finishing this page here, this is going to be very easy to complete this year. I'm pretty stoked about it. So very happy indeed with the progress. But anyway, I just wanted to come in and let you know about my uh, finish with Stitching Bird and how excited I was to finish that and get that uh, square marked off on my Whipgo board. Um, there is uh, there is one number that if Jessie Marie winds up calling it on the 27th of this month, that I'll have a, a second bingo on my whip go. So I'm kind of crossing my fingers that that's one of the numbers called because I would love to have a second one. Um, 
that if she called it, it would work. There is one more that if she called, it would make another um, bingo for me as well. Um, but I would have to do it. The first one that I'm looking at, I've already finished it. <laughs> so the second one, I'd have to actually do the work and then I'd have a bingo. But uh, that's exciting to know that I'm very close. I'm only one away for two more bingos. How fun, how fun. I'm so glad JC Marie shared this with all of us because I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Well, I'm gonna let you go back to uh, all your stitching. I'll, um, I did a little um, more talking than showing today, but I'm gonna get busy and I hope to talk to you soon. Happy stitching, everybody. Good morning, everyone. How are you? This is Dina, and today is Monday, August 23rd, and I'm here to give you a little bit of an update from stitching over the weekend. I decided to pull out my giggles from the snow, uh, giggles in the snow, and um, sorry, Coco is doing her morning stretching, scratching, spinning routine. <laughs> you can hear her, I'm sure. Anyway, I had prompts that I could meet with this pro project, and I decided that I would do that. I uh, had a couple of good solid days I could stitch in between other uh, commitments, but uh, I felt like I would get a fairly decent amount of stitching done, and I'm happy to report that I did get 1,032 stitches in in the course of um, a couple of days. So that was really good for me. I was feeling excited about that. So I wanna share with you where I got to on my giggles in the snow. If you've been watching, you, you're very familiar with this Mirabilia piece, but I had to finish her shoes, which I did. And then I came back over to the far side and I just started filling in all of these snow shadows that are around these children. And I got all of them done around the little boy all the way through the middle. And I came over and I got started on the ones around the little girl. Now here's the exciting news about that. I just have to finish the ones around her. And then all of the stitching is done. I will have a little bit of back stitch to outline on his coat and pockets and on her jacket and that will be it and then it'll be beading there's a lot of beading <laughs> even the words at the bottom the angels that go across the bottom is beaded so once I finish this cross stitching I'll have to roll it back up to start beading, I'll have to take it off the scroll frame. Um, <clears throat> but I may go ahead and do the word angels across here while it's still nice and, and tight before I take it all the way back up and off the scroll frame so I can do the beading all the way down. Um, I might even be able to do beading all the way up here before I have to take it off the scroll frame. So I just thought of that, might wanna do that. But anyway, this is on a white opalescent 28 count Lugana. And so that's the two of them put together. They are separate patterns and I just uh, put them together. When I did that, I took out a couple of these snow shadows that kind of were out and would have run into the other child. So I, I eliminated one of those, I think up at the top. And I decided last night as I was stitching, there's one more snow shadow that's kind of way out here, out of the margin. And I left it out because of framing. I wanted to, to keep it a smaller piece. And if I had that snow shadow way over here, I would have to go further out uh, for the framing. And so I may uh, drop that one as well. Um, but I've got a little bit of stitching left to do, maybe another day's worth of stitching to do on all the shadowing, and then I can start the back stitching and beading. So I'm getting, I'm getting closer, I'm getting closer. I'm, I'm gonna venture to say that I might be able to finish this piece this year for sure, and maybe even by the end of September. 
um, that's kind of exciting because then I could concentrate on yet another piece that I would like to put a lot of effort into and that's Sleepy Hollow. I really like to finish Sleepy Hollow this year so I can gift it to my son for Christmas. That's one he claimed when he saw me stitching it and I would love to be able to gift it to him this year for Christmas. So that's my stitching progress that I have with you. My husband is back home safe and sound from his hike. He had a fabulous time and um, but he was tired. But Coco was ecstatic. She flew across the yard, spun and spun and spun in circles around his feet, and then um, fortunately um, was able to just hang out in, in, in the street as we were talking to neighbors that we were meeting for the first time. And um, there were a couple of neighbors standing there talking with us who we had met before and their beautiful Labradoodle, who is a solid white Labradoodle. She's larger size than Coco, so she's a good head and shoulders above her. But her name is Margaret Thatcher. And she came right over to see Coco, and Coco went running over to see her. And um, so as, as we finished uh, talking yesterday, her owner, as they were walking off, Coco just started walking home with them. And I said, Coco, you have to come back. They're not taking you home. So she laughed and turned around and she said, I think we're almost ready for a play date. I hope that's true. I hope they will invite her over to play with their puppy. I think that would be so much fun. All right, well, that's all the updates, all the family news, and um, except for one thing. Um, <clears throat> our son is having surgery in the morning. We have to be there at 6.20 in the morning. I have um, planned to take um, a stitching piece with me. I'm uh, planning on taking uh, Field Miles Hollow because it's a smaller piece and I can work on it at the hospital. Uh, so that's my plan to do that. I am being allowed to go with him through the pre-op area until they take him back to surgery and then I have to wait in the surgery waiting lounge until he is finished. And once I know he's fine and in recovery, I have to go home. And then I don't get to come back until about seven o'clock that night from seven to nine, you can visit. One person can visit. So my guess is it will be me. Um, my husband does so well with Coco, so much better with Coco than I do keeping her occupied that we tend to, when we split, he takes Coco and I take the sun, so <laughs> it's kind of evolved that way. But uh, since he hadn't seen him all day, he may want to go back and visit. I will certainly would let him do that if he wanted to. So if you're a praying person, say some prayers for our son. By the time you see this, he may already be through with the surgery. I don't know how quick I'll get to upload this. I'm going to try to do it today. However... <laughs> Last time I did one of these, having to use my phone as my hotspot, like I'll have to do today, um, it took all night long. So this may take all day, I don't know, but I'm gonna go work on it. But I hope you are having a great month of stitching. August is almost over, I can't believe it. Um, I have had one finish this month, uh, so that's good for my stitch from Stash. Um, I've only purchased one little thing, it hasn't come in yet but I ordered the button to go on my finish, which was Stitching Bird. So I've ordered the button and uh, you know it couldn't travel by itself. So I also ordered a piece of fabric because I'm gonna have to take that out of my stitch from Stash. But I think that'll be fun. And uh, as soon as I get the button on there and get it fully finished, I'll share it with you again. In the meantime, everyone, happy stitching. You're precious. Yes, you are. I like your new haircut. You look very pretty. Oh, give me a side view. Or are you just ignoring me? <laughs> hey, darling. Hey. You sweet girl.